Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the April 9th, 2024 Town Council meeting. I would ask if we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would ask uh, if we could take a brief moment of silence to reflect on all that's happening uh, in the world and close by, both uh, good and bad. Thank you. At this time, I have to announce that our meeting is being audio and video recorded by Elka. And I would ask if there's anyone in the audience who is recording. And if so, if you'd please state your name for the record. Okay, seeing none, we'll move right along. Um, Jeannie, is there anyone signed up for public comments? No one has signed up. Okay. Uh, council comments. Counselors, anything happening? Anything going on? Any comments? <laughs> Happy spring. Happy spring. <laughs> what a beautiful day today. Okay, we're going to move right into the town manager's report. Sorry this came so early this month. <laughs> I'll try to say I hope you could find it in time for the meeting. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the uh, FY25 draft budget was submitted electronically April 1st to town council and school committee as per the charter. Um, I just want to thank everybody again for uh, helping create the, the budget. Literally everybody in town had a hand in putting this together. Um, it, it truly was a team effort. Um, now we'll look forward to the next phase uh, reviewing uh, the draft uh, budget. Um, for uh, adoption by June 1st. Um, DPW is beginning a uh, construction contract with DMP Marais Construction for new sidewalk on Pleasant Street uh, from Indian Springs Drive to Porter and Pleasant and Maple Shade down the bottom of the hill there. Um, that'll, close, uh, that'll close a major sidewalk loop in town that's sort of been earmarked for, uh, for construction since we pretty much since we put the master plan together. Um, additionally, uh, there'll be a small section from uh, on Hamden Road from Parker Street to Angela Drive, which is the last street out of town to sort of get those uh, kiddos uh, out of the neighborhood and, and to either Mountain View or Meadowbrook really, now that we've finished uh, the, the run on, on Parker Street as well. Um, Centertown Steering District Committee uh, has been officially named. Uh, its members, Nicole Polite, Don Starks, Jason Gumpert, Carolyn Farrows, Steve Graham, uh, ex officio member of the council, Ralph Page, ex officio member of uh, the planning board is Rob Terrell. Um, they're meeting Wednesday for the first time to kind of get their ducks in a row, uh, elect a chair and a vice chair. Um, then they'll have their first public meeting April 22nd uh, here at the COA. Um, so that's sort of a review of the whole process. Uh, and then we'll have a larger public engagement event May 20th um, to kind of get some public participation going, see uh, what people want to see from this, this new district in the center of town. Uh, school building committee uh, voted last month to submit the detailed design uh, for the new high school to the MSBA. Um, so we're kind of working through logistics now uh, with Fontaine and their construction plan, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, submittals are being prepared uh, for notice intent, notice of intent for conservation commission um, and site plan review uh, to application for the planning board. Uh, that should all get done. The applicant is yours truly, uh, and it's high on my list of priorities. So, um, and we're we're still on schedule for uh, site prep almost immediately when the the, the school is dismissed. 
Uh, there's also a public forum scheduled for this Thursday at six in the high school calf, uh, just to kind of bring everybody up to speed on where we are now. Uh, there'll be a, uh, a celebration of Earth Day this weekend, multiple uh, departments, uh, as well as uh, volunteers from the community. Um, the celebration kicks off Friday, April 12th at three at the library. Uh, there'll be a student art display with prizes, I think. Um, there's crafts, demonstrations, and then the clean up East Long Meadow. I think you can also pick up supplies for the cleanup the next day. Um, and that starts at, uh, 9 AM at the town hall. So thanks to everybody that's going to per participate to help, uh, do their part to, uh, clean up EL. Um, we're still, uh, in the interview process for the planning director. Um, we actually had an interview today. Um, hopefully, uh, we have a couple of applicants that, uh, look promising. So hopefully, uh, we can get somebody in that office, uh, before, before too long. Um, and obviously <clears throat> our, our other glaring opening is the human resources director. Um, we are in the process of going through all our policies and processes and procedures to make sure that that job description is exactly what we need and want. Um, and in concert with everybody else that's in that department. Um, I hope to get that on the street at the end of the week. Um, and we are officially under contract with uh, Whip City Fiber, Westfield Gas and Electric, uh, to begin the fiber to the home project design process. Um, IT Director Ryan Quimby has sort of taken over the administration of that contract and the uh, process. Um, so we may start to see some uh, trucks that we don't recognize in town uh, from either Westfield Gas and Electric, their Whip City Fiber, or their subcontractor, PVC, who is handling the design uh, for the system. Um, we got some upcoming events. Uh, high School Public Forum, again, Thursday night at 6 in the high school cafeteria. Earth Day, as I mentioned, uh, <clears throat> Friday at 3 at the library, Saturday uh, at 9 for the cleanup. Uh, the Fishing Derby, Lions Club Fishing Derby is uh, April 13th at Heritage Park, 6 a.m. Uh, get there early. There's an early bird joke in there that I'm not going to make. Uh, <laughs> Centertown District uh, is meeting uh, April 22nd at 6. Uh, we have our Benefits Fair uh, open enrollment April 25th. Uh, that's at Birchham Park uh, from 1 to 4. Um, and then uh, another coffee with the town manager, May 1st, 1030 uh, here at the Council on Aging. And I had one more thing that came up uh, after I sent this to you last week. Um, we have a uh, appointment and swearing in of a member of the Board of Assessors, uh, Hayden Smith. Um, and uh, the that's that section of the Charter 5.4 that... the you have basically have the right to refuse up to 45 days. Um, and I apologize for not and sort of putting you on the spot right now, but if you had any appetite, they do have a meeting before your next meeting. Um, and I'd like to get him in there to give uh, Marilyn and Marty some, some help and get his feet wet before he, before their schedule starts kicking off. And obviously, you know, they have a really busy fall with, uh, well, and summer with valuations and then the setting the tax rate. So, um, if that's all right with you, I would appreciate uh, a little latitude from that section 5.4 of the charter. Um, and that's all I got tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, so what is uh, the council's wish as far as uh, waiving the 45 day uh, period for Hayden Smith and the Board of Assessors? Um, I have no issue with I don't it. Have any issues. Um, I know the Board of Assessors has always been phenomenal in uh, fielding applicants and finding the right fit, and I have total faith in them. I'm good. Um, does anyone have any thoughts? Or would someone like to make a motion? I will attempt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. I move to waive the council's remaining veto period for the appointment of Hayden Smith to the Board of Assessors. Second. Having a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you. 
So used to calling roll calls. <laughs> Let's do that. Thank you very much. Um, I did want to mention that um, Whip City Fiber is already driving around. They have been for weeks. Yeah. Um, I've seen their vehicles all over the place. Guys running up and down, checking poles and taking notes also. Um, it's nice to see. Hopefully the engineering will go together pretty quickly and we'll keep it moving right along. Um, anyone have any questions for our town manager? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to go right into uh, communications, correspondence, and announcements. Oh, I have one. Um, we were sent a, uh, a petition uh, by a resident. Um, the petition was requesting a sidewalk be installed on Chestnut Street between Summers Road and Prospect Street. And um, having looked at the petition, I think this is something that should go on to our uh, sidewalk plan. Um, there's a lot of traffic on that portion of Chestnut Street, and uh, I think it made sense. So I, in turn, uh, approached Tom, and I asked him if we could get it put onto our master sidewalk plan so that as soon as funding comes up, we can have it installed. Uh, he was agreeable to it, and I think we should... Uh, send a letter to the petitioner just letting her know that we're adding that to our uh, to our sidewalk plan and hopefully when funding is available sooner rather than later it would be great but um, again we all know that cost of walks is not cheap and um, and it keeps going up so but does anyone have any thoughts or uh, comments on adding that do we have a substantial number of projects sort of in the plan still yes sorry that was a short answer <laughs> <laughs> we still have three minutes to 615 if you got yeah no the, it's a pretty comprehensive plan it, it obviously has our existing sidewalk network and then uh, like i mentioned about pleasant street we're we're trying to connect these yeah these gaps. i was wondering is there like a priority like this street maybe might be more of a strategic priority is that within the plan or is it just kind of it's it's sort of uh yeah it it doesn't it's not listed one yeah, yeah. one through ten or anything or one through fifty it was more probably apt but um we sort of set it up on uh the Bruce has a whole bunch of criteria in terms of safety and uh are we gonna put in a crosswalk do we need a crosswalk well then let's re you know do the sidewalk and if we have issue with people crossing the street or what, you know, so there, there's a, there's a list of things. I'm sure this probably wasn't our first petition for the sidewalk either. So it's been a while since I've been in the DPW folder, but um, I'm sure there's, there's backup information for why all these streets or all these sidewalks ended up on the list in the first place and the reasons why. So, and I know Bruce always talks with the, the police chief. Um, and so that's sort of a collaborative effort to find out if, um, you know, there's been any accidents or calls or what's safe, what isn't. So yeah, a lot goes into it, but I do I don't think they've been prioritized. Um, and that's probably having to do with how much it costs and how much we think we're actually going to get done. Um, yeah, I mean the, the pleasant street, although it's only 2,500 feet, uh, you can imagine that's probably a, there's a lot of retaining walls and cause that's sort of a, a tough terrain so that sort of eats away at the budget a lot faster than we could have wanted it to as well but um that's how the plan goes well it was last summer that we did uh parker street wasn't it mm -hmm. section yeah um phenomenal job in out did a great job on it um residents were extremely happy that you know what nothing was tied up and uh yeah i said very very well done any other? Yes. Um, with the sidewalk plan for Pleasant Street up to Porter Road, mm -hmm. are we going to be dealing with any uh, retaining walls in that area? I uh, know uh, going up Pleasant on the yeah. right, there are a few retaining walls. I didn't know beyond Indian Spring. Yes. Yeah. Will be some yeah pro probably coming back down. There's really no way to sort of make it safe and keep the grades right. Gotcha. Without cutting back into somebody's yard, which uh, is kind of hard to do from a grading standpoint. 
Um, Thanks. And sort of a nightmare from a legal standpoint in which we have temporary easements and things of that nature. Oh, I know some folks have logs in the front of their property in that area with spokes sticking out of them in case a car goes rogue. It's right. going to take the tires out before it hits the house. I don't know if this will alleviate that. We do have a, a well, it's all over town. Oh, yeah. it, it's all over town, but that that portion of Pleasant Street sees high speed often yeah. and a lot of accidents uh, up and down the hill. So uh, safety will sort of be paramount. And I don't I haven't seen the final design, but I'm guessing uh, we got to get the sidewalk across the street somewhere down there. So there'll probably be another uh, rapid flash beacon, you know, the, the light like at the rail trail. Um, to sort of maybe slow people down and let people indicate or let them know that because that that guardrail in particular at the bottom of the hill at Maple Shade has been replaced right. like at least four times since mm -hmm. since I started in seventeen. So, um, oh, well, at least, yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, we're going to move on to um, number seven: public hearings. Um, <clears throat> Mm -hmm. uh, this is a public hearing for required second reading for the proposed bylaw amendment of Chapter 180, Commission on Disability. Um, this bylaw amendment will replace the words Commission on Disability with Commission for People with Disabilities throughout the chapter. Uh, council members present are Anna Jones, Matt Boucher, Kathy Hill, Ralph Page, Marilyn Richards, Connor O'Shea, and John Torsha. I would ask the clerk to read in the legal notice. The East Long Meadow Town Council will hold a public hearing on April 9, 2024 at 6.15 p.m. in the room on the Council on Aging, located at 328 North Main Street, for the purpose of addressing a proposed bylaw amendment of Chapter 180, Commission on Disability. This bylaw amendment will replace the words Commission on Disability with the Commission for People with Disabilities throughout the chapter. The public hearing may also be attended via Zoom webinar. Information relating to this bylaw is available for public inspection at the town clerk's office, 60 Center Square. Like to view an electronic version of the proposed amendments, please visit www.eastlongmeadow, et cetera. For the council, Gene R. Quagletti, town clerk, clerk of the council. Thank you. So at this time, I'm gonna do a second reading for this because it's short and easy. So under the title, uh, it's chapter 180. Originally, it is a Commission on Disability. We are changing the on disability to Commission for People with Disabilities. Uh, then under section, uh, subsection 180-2, Vacancies, uh, we are once again replacing the two words on disability with for people with disabilities. Under subsection 180-3, Purpose, uh, the first line, uh, we'll read uh, the purpose of the Commission for People with Disabilities, and we're removing Commission on Disability. And then under subsection 180-4, Powers and Duties, under uh, number A, again, we are mm -hmm. replacing uh, the words Commission on Disability with title Commission for People with Disabilities. So typically at this time, we ask the applicant to speak a little bit. Um, Tom, would you like to just give a quick rendering of the reason? Yep. Um, so this is sort of, uh, this was a request from the commission. Um, this is more in line and appropriate for what a body that does what they do is called. Um, it's, it's a little more uh, human, if you will. Um, and so that they proposed the 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 change. We had Jesse check with the state to make sure there was no foul ups. And it seems like uh, a lot of uh, municipalities across the Commonwealth are are making this change. So yep. it's a good change. Yep. Um, so this is a public hearing. So at this time, I am going to open it up to the public. If anyone would like to talk for or against uh, the bylaw change. Don, is there anyone online with their hands up that would like to speak? Not, Ralph. Okay. I will bring it back to the board then. Um, so I would ask the board uh, what their thoughts are on it, if there's any issues. 
no one has any thing, then I would uh, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on closing the public hearing? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I would uh, entertain a motion for approval then. I make a motion to approve the proposed bylaw amendment of Chapter 180, Commission on Disability, as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say. Is it a roll call? Is it a roll? Why is it a roll call? I love. <laughs> okay, this is a roll call vote. So with no further discussion, roll call vote. Anna? Yes. Matt? Yes. Kathy? Yes. I am a yes. Marilyn? Yes. Connor? Yes. And John? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Moving on to orders of the day licensing matters. We have a one-day liquor license for the Masonic Temple. Is there a motion? <laughs> I make a motion to approve a one-day liquor license for the Masonic Temple of East Long Meadow, 43 Chestnut Street, for a graduation party, May 17th, 2024, from 5 p.m. to 12, to, to midnight to 12 a.m. Second. I have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion on it? Hearing none, not a roll call vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Our next uh, item is uh, approval of a one-day liquor license. Jeannie, did we want to do this, or are we going to wait for East Village Tavern? They want to wait until May for this. They, they're not ready for what they need. Okay. So we are going to skip over uh, 8A2, and we are going to move to... Uh, the change of hours on the liquor license application for Shaker Bowl. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I'm Josh Goldstein, uh, attorney for from Bacon Wilson um, here on behalf of Shaker Bowl Inc. Adam Oliveri, uh, representing the ownership group of Shaker Bowl Inc. Okay. What would you like to, to do? So we are seeking to change uh, our hours of when we can sell alcoholic beverages. Um, the current time would only permit us to sell alcohol starting at 1 p.m. Um, and due to many requests for special events, certain tournaments, and the, the like, um, we desire to be able to serve alcohol earlier. Um, and along with that, we have a full breakfast menu. So it makes sense to allow it kind of to go hand in hand there. Um, the, also, for now, we're still only serving single serving beverages. The full full bar has not is not in in progress yet so we're just simply trying to start to amend the hours so we can easily serve our customers better and you did say that you have a breakfast menu so food food is required to be served right. whenever alcohol is yeah i did notice that under your proposed changed hours you have sunday to saturday 8 a.m to 1 a.m right sunday should be 10 a.m okay so is there any issue in amending the application to make Sunday 10 a.m.? Well, the only time the hours really show up is when I do the cover form that is approved and signed by the local licensing authority. And that's where I put the hours. Okay. So wherever your motion reflects, I will put those hours on that form that you approve that goes with the application. And do you need any... Um email or mail or anything from them requesting the 10 a.m. instead of the 8 a.m.? I No, I don't. I know if the, okay. the LA you'd want that on record or? I don't think it'll hurt to have it on record. It's a simple email. Yeah, because you could you could revise this cover letter and redate it or something. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, good. To your first thing tomorrow. So with that, I'm going to open it up to the council. Are there any questions with regards to changing hours of operation? 
Marilyn? <laughs> you probably think like I do, so. I don't know. Uh, um, this is tough for me because it's 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and you advertise parties, family, fun, and more. And when you came in initially for your when you got started and how excited we were that you were all, folks were all from East Long Meadow and, and very supportive. And we still feel that way. Um, I'm just, it's the, it's the atmosphere. It's um, eight o'clock in the morning kids. I mean, do you really feel you're going to have that kind of an interest for breakfast in the bowling alley? Yeah, we picked uh, Adam Oliveri again for the record. We picked eight o'clock just to be consistent kind of with what the other liquor license were in town, too. I know that we had spoke uh, to a couple other folks in town. It seemed like, um, you know, the the likelihood that somebody's coming right at eight o'clock is probably unlikely. But just to give our guests as many options as possible. But there are a lot of special events. Again, these are just single serve uh, we've only since we were in front of you the last time, I think we've added seven or eight additional SKUs uh, it to re just to refresh your memory. We we didn't want to just offer malt based based beverages in the past. So now they're vodka based. And those um, manufacturers offer Bloody Marys and mimosa type drinks. So if there were a shower or an event in the morning. Again, with breakfast, um, we just wanted to give our guests as many options as possible. But these aren't big you know, 100, 300 people events. These are small gatherings in our party room. And just to go off that, I mean, you know, it it saves us from having to get a one day liquor license every time they need an event. Also, there's a limit on how many one day liquor licenses I think you can get. And also, I mean, it's also spending that money every time you need a one day liquor license. Um, so I, you know, I, I think it kind of avoids that. And you know, they've already spent a lot of money in getting this place up to par. So, actually, I was going to suggest that that you go to the single liquor license event. Um, for years, we've done that, and with other other restaurants in the community, there were certain times where they wanted to extend their hours beyond what was on their license, and so they came in for a special event. Um, I don't. I mean, is it twenty five? Thirty. Thirty. For applicants. You're going to have more than 30 parties a year. $100 times 30, 30 events. That was also $3,000. Yeah, we have parties pretty much every day. Um, one of the things we keep running into is just with our regular birthday parties, as fathers or mothers would like to have a cocktail. 11 is, you know, 11, 11.30 even. Uh, if they want to have a beer, we still can't do it because it's one o'clock right now. So just to give ourselves as many options as possible for these special events. Um, and again, keeping it consistent with the other town licenses here in town. I think many of them start at 8 a.m. Jeannie, are they open? The, I'm trying to think of the licenses we do have that. Um, I don't think so. There may be five or six others that. Well, I'm saying, as far as not open. I think there were six um, as far as uh, that started at. Crunches, um, I don't know. And I think that's like. Bentley's, well, before it switched over, I know they had come in because they wanted to start serving breakfast and offer mimosas and stuff like that. And that's why that was one of my first questions. Are you going to have food? Right. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to be difficult. No, that's OK. We're, I just yeah. um, sure. how you dubbed yourself when you first came to us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had one situation which was unfortunate and. Um, Still haven't seen a report on that, but that doesn't matter. Um, you know, you, I'm just concerned about how this is going to take place. Is the alcohol going to be served with with people seated in the cafe area, or are they going to be drinking at the where you bowl? Yeah, we we're not going to change anything with our operations, so it's been the same for 50 years. The um, service window, everything is served out of a service window. And everything is single serve. And then you take it to your lane or if we're having a special event, uh, I don't know if any of you have been down to see it, but we updated the, the party room. So we have a small room probably from here to the back wall where you can have a get together and we rent the room out for special occasions. Um, but nothing's changing operationally. We have had no events since um, we added the liquor. Um, everything's been going smooth. And, and again, our attention is not to be pouring 
spirits out of a bottle. These are just single serve mimosas, Bloody Marys, things of that nature. So that's going to be your policy. Single serve. That's our current policy only for for a number of reasons. One, because of what you're saying, we're, tr we're trying to keep a family friendly atmosphere and two for, um, you know, to limit waste and other reasons. You know, the single serve is a nice model. Um, at this time, we don't have any in intention of going another direction, but, um, you know, that's really where this came up. Just single serve Bloody Marys, mimosas and things of that nature. I'm done. Any other, other concerns, comments? Connor? I personally don't see any issue with it, especially since people can go down the street to the liquor store and purchase at 8 a.m. So I don't see the difference mm -hmm. swimming in an establishment. Thank you. John? I definitely don't mind it being moved up to 1 p.m., but I sort of see where Maryland's coming from. I sort of struggle with 8, 8 a.m. I know it probably is possible in other areas, but this is the first time I've seen this, um, just being on this body. Um, maybe, I don't know, 10, I don't know, 10 a.m. since more, but again, I, I could be open data. It just, it's something, I'm, 1 a.m. makes sense because there's a lot, there's a couple of places now right. that are at that time period um, that are restaurants and other establishments, but, um, I don't know, that morning just makes me. Um, yeah. Are the majority of the events uh, predominantly birthday parties? So the uh, event room is new because the old ownership group was using it as sort of a catch-all. It had chairs and, and trash in it, so we really cleaned it up. So we just started renting that out for special events, but we've seen showers and uh you know, other type of events other than birthday parties where it's not all children. Um, a lot of our league bowlers like okay. to have some of their special events in our house. Right. So, um, so no, it's not just birthday parties, it's retirement parties and, and things of other nature. And, and again, I think we're being consistent in our requests, uh, similar to the other five or six liquor license here in town. I think they're all 8 a.m. Is that not correct? Well, there's more than five or six that have liquor licenses, but I think, oh, the total amount is five or six that or have the 8 a.m. Have the 8 a.m. Okay. Maybe just five or six. Can. I mean, that's allowed by the state. So that's been, they've been in place for a long time, those licenses, I believe. Of, of those five or six, are they open at 8 a.m.? Um, I don't know. I could Google. I do. I can answer that. Um, again, and I think like Bentley's wanted to open early. And I don't know if they're, now that it's East Village, if they're even serving a breakfast. So um, I don't know. I don't go there for breakfast. So Matt, question. Um, so I think in you know favor of consistency, if there are other liquor licenses for 8 a.m., which I don't know off the top of my head. I don't think we have that information in front of us. I did ask I would, Jeannie at one point to look it up. I got and, it. Um, I mean... But again, I, there was there was more than I thought. Actually, I yeah, I believe there I don't was tend to drink at eight a.m. So I don't know anything that's stupid at eight. Um, but I think one of the things that um, the council needs to keep in mind is if there is issues with it, that we can always ask them to come back in and have a discussion and and make a modification to it. Um, and I think that's where we where we should be looking that things can change based on how it works out and if there's no issues, it's great. I have those if you want me to. Yeah, yeah. would you like to share it here? Uh, Donardo's, Fazio's, Ikira, Peppa's, Redstone, Pasta, and Pizza Shop. Their hours are 8 a.m. Mondays through Saturdays. Oh, Donardo's. Well, no, I was, I was, yeah, <laughs> Donardo. Yeah. Yeah. Many of those don't it's, aren't even open then. Right, but it's allowed, and maybe it's they allowed. Yes, maximum I, of hours allowed. I think right. that's what so, it is. So, I've had flip licenses for a long time. So, with that, I know this isn't a public hearing, um, but I would ask if there's anyone in the public that wanted to weigh in on it. I would be more than willing to hear from you. Don, is there anyone online? No. Okay. So, I would bring it back to the board. Um, What's the wishes of the board? Would someone like to make a motion? Good, good. 
a second it. <laughs> <laughs> and just remember that the motion will be altered for Sunday. It starts at 10 a.m. Wait, why don't we just do for Sunday, just do like 8 a.m., right? Because if all those other restaurants were 8 a.m. So they're not on Sunday. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, all right, all right. Okay. So, John, would you like to make a... Sure, I will make the... Um, I make a motion to approve a change of hours of the liquor license application for Shaker Road, 168 Shaker Road to uh, Sunday, um, 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Through, through Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. I think I'll so second that. <laughs> Flow. Yes, I think that's correct. Okay. Um, any any other uh, discussion on it? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. Okay, you are all set. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So I'll get a revised letter? Yep, get it for your face nice. tomorrow. Thank you. You're we'll thinking positive. That's absolutely right. I can't imagine something's um, I, So under 8A4, it's um, approval of the 2024 common victualler licenses. Is there a motion? Yeah. Matt, would you like to make a motion? A2. Okay. Well, uh -oh. all right. I make a motion to approve the 2024 common big, big chewaller licenses as presented. Second. <laughs> Tough food. Okay. Uh, motion made and seconded. Further discussion. So, um, just to bring everyone up to speed, these were. Uh, the licenses that we looked at businesses that we thought required or should require a particular license um, that hadn't in the past. And, you know, whether it be um, someone with picnic tables outside for service or whatever, and we're trying to bring it into a conformity with uh, what the Board of Health had for a list. So these were ones that uh, were sent back in. So we took uh, the food permit list and then went through it. And actually, two of them, two of the uh, managers came back and they said, oh, we're just grab and go. We don't have seating. So I took those off the list. So I think there's just one more I have to follow up. But everybody else came back after two letters and an email. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. That's awesome. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. oh, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Okay. Um, 8B, financial matters. 8B1. Uh, town manager presenting of FY25 operational budget as required under Article 6, Section 1 of the town charter. Hi again. Hello. Hey there. Uh, did you do up a budget. Hey, we did a budget. Read it into the record. Yeah, I will. I <laughs> will. I will. Forward. No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, everybody. Uh, Everybody got this April 1st, town council, school committee, Jeannie, uh, as, as are, is required. I think everybody should have a hard copy at this point. Um, this is our, uh, in, in sort of simple terms, the, the level services budget, uh, with the exception of, um, we added a position in the school department, um, out of the general fund. And then we also added a sewer foreman, which we've never had. Um, out of, that's completely out of the sewer enterprise fund. Um, I just want to make sure everybody uh, has everything. We we sort of tried to keep some of the stuff the same, so we didn't throw you too many curveballs. But um, obviously, we have a lot of uh, new faces and new ideas, and so we we tried to do a little reorganization to try to make things. Um, like a little more user friendly. Uh, I know some of the uh, lettering is still pretty small on some of the printouts. Um, I've only found three typos so far. Don't bring them up. <laughs> I, I was going to mention one. A governor Oh, I spelled it wrong. There's, there's an extra. Unbelievable. 
Sorry. Well, so I found four typos. <laughs> John found one. I found three. Oh. Um, he was left there. So most of it's the same as last year. The backup information you have is all of our, uh, the munis reports for every department. Um, and all of our, um, all of our other enterprise funds, we got water, sewer, um, stormwater, LCAT, the ambulance fund, as well as trash revolving, council on aging revolving. Um, and the, I think there's some informational stuff in here about um, rec, uh, which, which is more informational than anything else. We're, we're, as we went through the process, we found there's a lot of, uh, there, well, this will be a understatement of a dispensary, a lot of accounting, uh, but we have a lot of different funds governed by a lot of different general laws. Um, and so Kim is doing a nice job of correcting, uh, sort of, uh, maybe not mistakes of the past, How but handled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've sort of, we've sort of brought things into, uh, a better light in terms of explaining things and how we, uh, spend our money. Uh, most of which, so they'll obviously all these numbers are based on, um, governor Healy's, I didn't have to spell it. <laughs> governor Healy's, uh, budget from January, uh, which is obviously going to change before we finish this review process. Um, we also found out um, from the LS uh, that our ambulance fund, uh, we may have to move some things around because you're not allowed to vote to appropriate uh, an amount over what's in the revenue account for the ambulance fund, which last year we were close, but uh, the, uh, the auditors, I think, picked it up and Kim got a, 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 a note from the state saying, hey, you know, so we may have to uh, either we have some stuff that we 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 projected the revenue number for the, for the ambulance fund and are like paying half of a capital project out of the ambulance fund and half out of the general fund. Well, if the revenues come back right before the vote, we could actually pull that amount out of the general fund and and sort of bring that budget down even more. Uh, but that all depends on sort of it's just a work in progress, right? So where that ends up. Um, so I, I don't know, uh, how much you want to get into or, or if anybody has any thoughts on, we really want to get this, uh, as best as we can in terms of understanding what we're giving you. Uh, I think I mentioned in the letter that this made a lot of sense to us, but you know, for the most part, it, it, it was just the group. And if, if the public thinks they want to see something different or you want to see something different, uh, by all means, uh, let us know. Uh, this uh, draft budget is on the islammeadowma.gov webpage on the town manager that's been uploaded. So uh, everybody can find all this information to see where we start. And then uh, sort of we'll make a comparison in June on where we end. Um, so. With that, um, I don't know if anybody had any questions on format, uh, any of the guts of it. Uh, I'll sort of five year capital plan. Yep. Did I miss it or is it in there somewhere? Nope, it's not in there. Um, can we get one? We can. Um, we'll do that. Think under, I don't know whether it's a rule. Oh, it's in there. Yeah. Is required. Yep. Yeah. I, I you certainly have to vote on it. A projection yep. of where things are going over the next five years. And yeah. I'm sure that's only a small because things change on a yearly basis. So, yep. and we will, yeah, I think we, there's a couple iterations that kick it out farther than five. Um, yep. I know that was sort of something that we had talked about in the past about uh, some of these uh, doesn't need necessarily need to be a debt exclusion vote, but some of these larger ticket items, um, sort of need to be planned for outside of our operating capital plan, which we just haven't been funding. Um, so this, like I said, the goal of this draft budget for me and Rebecca and Kim um, was to 
sort of curtail our percentage that this this budget's been rising over the last couple of years coming back from COVID, which we've done to the tune of a uh, 2.95% increase uh, across all departments uh, compared to close to five and a half last year. Um, and then to really bolster our capital spending. Um, so this draft plan has uh, quite a bit of projects across, uh, you know, obviously the general fund capital outlay, but um, we've supplemented with some free cash. Uh, you have a motion tonight that may look confusing, but it'll make sense in a minute uh, to, uh, to supplement that as well. Um, and then uh, bonding out of our enterprise funds and, and then some grant opportunities that put us close to about eight and a half million dollars. If all the cards fall now, I think we've all been doing this long enough to know that all the cards are not going to fall. Um, but it's certainly more aggressive and more, I think in line on what we should be doing as a town um, in terms of trying to keep up with our capital expenses and infrastructure. Um, so with that, that's my, that's my spiel. So page eight, nine, and 10 of 28 with a really, really small print. print. Yep. I want to say thank you. Um, <laughs> we're putting in the explanations of, because as you go through the munis budgets, certain things pop out at mm -hmm. you. The percentages seem way off. And, yep. but then you go back to that section and the explanations are perfect. And at least then you can understand why why that's happened, such as legal coming out of each department and going into one separate. Um, you know, there's instances like that, uh, IT with the software and all. Um, you know, once you explain that, hey, this is the reasons why we're moving it, it makes a lot of sense. So but so that was that was one of the major uh was the that eight, nine, and ten? The numbers don't match on eleven and twelve, so the percentages doesn't look right at the bottom of the page. Uh, so eight, nine, and ten is the actual numbers from the all the departments and and how that breaks out. So, but yeah, thanks. We uh, again, I, we've been working hard on it. Yeah, well, and and so has like I said, so has everybody else. Everybody's been very gracious. I've had to meet with, um, I've had to meet with department heads some more than once. Um, almost everybody, uh, has made concessions, uh, to try to meet some of these goals of our keeping our spending down. And, um, so it, uh, it truly was a team effort, but, um, I think, uh, I just want to say again, how great of a job Kim and Olga and the entire finance department does preparing this information, um, so that, so we can all sort of understand it. Now, I'm sure everyone's already read through it twice. <laughs> we'll have time to ask <laughs> questions at the next meeting. <laughs> yeah, I, a lot of us have. So thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions for Tom on it? My question, Tom, just to reiterate that comment, I do like this format that it was presented in a lot better. It made it easier to digest and see what the changes actually were. But I also like the fact that we have projections and forecasting probably for the first time in our town's history, which is important. So thank you. Bud. Yep. Okay. Thanks. We are on to 8B2, uh, acceptance of Chapter 90 uh, funding. Is there a motion? Yes. I make a motion to accept the FY 2025 Chapter 90 apportionment in the amount of $573,000. Be expended under the jurisdiction of the Department of Public Works and said some to be reimbursed by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Second. Having a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Um, this is one of those major accounting things that we've been raising and appropriate chapter, yes. chapter 90 money. So now we are not doing that anymore. That's a good thing then. It is a very good thing. Um, but what I will say is... Um, it's a little disappointing when you go back over the last decade or more and see that this sum of money is not really increased from the state at all. Um, it's very similar to where it's been, and you don't get anywhere near as much now as what we 
got 10 years ago for the same amount of money. And um, yep. it would be nice if the state was able to keep up on some of it and increase uh, the amounts, but it has nothing to do with our town government and we will take what we can get, right? <laughs> Any other uh, comments? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed to taking money, I like it. <laughs> Okay, um, 8B3, um, release of $363,063.20 unused American Rescue Plan Act money. Is there a motion? Yes. Now, my motion to release $363,063.20 in unused American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funds from previously approved ARPA projects to unassigned ARPA balance. Account 585506, permanent wastewater flow, $17,800. 585508, IT fuel system management, $2,230.90. 585509, IT student information system, $7,890. 585512 POL marked cruisers to $22,101.30. 585513 POL unmarked cruiser $1,350. 585514 DPW North Main tip Harkness slash Dearborn. $311,691. Total unused ARPA funds, $363,063.20. I'll second that. First meeting back and they give you that motion. <laughs> and I did fine, didn't I? <laughs> Having a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, B3, uh, we have the release of, nope. It's the same agenda item, but it's broken down into two motions. Oh, so we're sharing it. Yeah, I guess so. Really? Okay. <laughs> so is there a motion for that one? I move to appropriate $311,691 from free cash for the North Main Transportation Transportation Improvement Program, TIP, Harkness slash Deerport Project, account 2414135-585514. Is there a second? Thank you. Motion made and seconded. Um, Tom, would you like to just give uh, the public a quick over? Of course. So um, the DPW TIP project, uh, which is still ongoing, still going to finish. Uh, we don't expect those. So there's a timeline on the ARPA funds that has to be appropriated by uh, 12, 31, 24, which obviously we've appropriated it so that we hit that. But it needs to be spent by 12, 31, 26. And we are currently on the TIP project for fiscal 27. And this money includes construction um, oversight. So we're, uh, we're worried that we're not going to spend the money in time to, to hit the ARPA reporting time. So we've put the money back and then replaced that account with free cash in the same amount so that we will finish the project and we don't have to worry about the timeline. We will then use the ARPA money that we have remaining to populate this year's capital account, capital fund or capital projects so that hopefully with items that we're going to purchase and get right away so that we can appropriate and spend and we won't have to worry about our Got it. It's a little house, housekeeping so we don't run into any deadlines and then lose the money, which right. it's, it's early, but we don't want to lose anything. Yeah, right. exactly. Great. Nope, that makes a lot of sense. Is there any other questions? Okay, we had a motion made. We had a motion seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, that passes. Okay, next, um, B4, rescinding the following bond authorizations. Is there a motion for rescinding bond authorizations? Yes. I make a motion that the town of East Longmeadow rescinds the following amounts that have been authorized to be borrowed, but which are no longer needed for the purpose for which they were initially approved. Unissued amount, 138000 Date of loan order approval, 5-19-2008, for the purpose of landfill. $500, date of loan order approval, 5-21-2012, the Harkness Pump Station. And $58,250, 5-16-2016, for the water main replacement. Second. Thank you. Hi, my name's Christine. I'm calling for me Oh, it's nice of you to join us. <laughs> Extending your car warranty? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have a motion. Break. Break. <laughs> have a motion seconded. Uh, further discussion. So this was more um, a house cleaning. Uh, we went back through different approvals and all <laughs> and saw that, like, say, on the landfill, it was approved, I think it was 175000 we only took a bond out for a portion of it because we didn't need the rest of it. Right. So now we're just rescinding. <laughs> okay. More housekeeping. More housekeeping. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We are going to jump to uh, 8C1, which is approval of minutes for February 27th. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the February 27th, 2024 open session minutes. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? One abstention. One abstention. Any abstentions? Yes, one. <laughs> um, okay. 8C2, uh, minutes of March 12th, 2024. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the March 12, 2024 open session minutes. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? One. <laughs> One abstention. Thank you. And then uh, under C3, um, March 12, 2024 executive session minutes. I make a motion to approve the March 12th, 2024 executive session minutes. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention. Thank you. Moving on. Old business. We have no old business listed. Uh, under new business, we have a uh, proposed zone change to the industrial district for 104 Shaker Road, rear of Shaker Road. And da -da -da, this is not a public hearing. Is there anyone present or online for 104 Shaker Road? That's a week. <laughs> yes. I don't know who's this. Yeah. Uh, Lebecca. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Could you state your name uh, for the record? Yes, Philippe Cravo of Arlovec Associates, 40 School Street, Westfield. Um, I'm really just here. I believe the, um, this was just the first reading and um, to be referred to the other, you know, planning board, to the other boards and commissions and, um, you know, go through that process, work, work out the kinks and then come back to the Council with hopefully some uh, positive recommendations. Okay. Thank you for being here. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, would someone like to make a motion regarding this? I'll do that. I move that we refer the proposed zone change to industrial zoning district for 104 Shaker Road, Rear Shaker Road, Ray Street, Bond Avenue, and Lewis Lane to the planning board for review and recommendation to the town council. I'll second that. 
Okay, having a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Oh. Okay, it's headed off to the planning board for you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Um, under new business E2, we have a proposed bylaw amendment to chapter 160, section four, board of assessors. And Jeannie, this isn't a first reading, is it? Is it really just no? Okay. It's a referral. So this is a referral. So is there a motion to refer? I move to refer the proposed bylaw amendment to Chapter 160, Section 4, Board of Assessors, Oath of Office, Certification, to the Bylaw Review Committee for review and recommendation to the Town Council. Second. Having a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. E3. We have a proposed bylaw amendment for removal of subsection 450-10.2C. Um, is there a motion? I make a motion to refer the proposed bylaw amendment for the removal of section 450-10.2C1 of Article 10 ground-mounted photovoltaic installations to the planning board for review and recommendation to the town council. Second. Having a motion made and seconded. Further discussion? So this is an internal um, from the planning board um, requesting to look at this, correct, Tom? This is, yeah, from, yes. Just making sure everyone knows that it's not from the outside, that this is something that uh, we as a town have uh, reached out to do. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Action items. Does anyone have any action items going ahead to the next meeting other than dig in and read your budgets? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of items in it and uh, a lot of good material. And so that'd be supplemented with a five year. <laughs> and I tag on to that. Um, if while you're reading your budgets, you have a question, would you email it to either John or myself? As the Financial Oversight Committee is meeting weekly through the end of May until we have a budget to uh, recommend to the council. Uh, and that way we can address any questions you may have in the course of our meetings. Okay. Okay, so at this time, um, I would make a motion to move into executive session to consider the purchase, exchange, taking, lease, or value of real property for 382 North Main Street. If such discussion may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the governmental body, then return to then return to open session. Um, adjourn or are you going to vote? Um, the purpose of adjournment. We're not sure. So, well, I'll either leave the webinar closer to the public, but I'll either end it or leave it in limbo. Yeah. I would know. I would leave it in limbo because um, we're not quite sure. We do have a full uh, council tonight, yeah. so well, that's fine. Have a roll call. I second. Yes, it. Huh? I second it. Okay. I made the motion. Marilyn seconded. This is a roll call vote. Uh, Anna. Yes. Matt. Yes. Kathy. Yes. I am a yes. Marilyn. Yes. Connor. Yes. And John. Yes. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Welcome back, everyone. Um, we have just exited uh, executive session. And um, I would ask uh, if there's a motion to be made on the floor. All right. I move to direct the town manager to move forward with the taking of real property at 382 North Main Street for no more than $5.6 million. Second. I have a motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Um, hearing none, I'd like to do a roll call vote. Uh, John? Yes. 
Connor. Yes. Marilyn. Yes. I am a yes. Kathy. Yes. Matt. Yes. And Anna. No. Okay. And then would there be a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. I will second that. (laughs) All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you.